would you like to improve your area? Would you like to see an improvement to the quality of life, reduction in traffic, reduction in pollution, reduction in accidents? A better environment to live in, to sit outside and talk to neighbours. To a place that is a pleasure to be in. Places where children can play without tons and tons of cars coming through. Reduce the speed limit, uh, make it safer, less traffic, uh, trees in a barren landscape. Giving back the the road and the pavement back to the people and you know rather than the car rolling. What started off was an argument with my son Alex who um, at the time was six years old and he wanted to go and, uh, over to um, play with some friends and I said no because it was too dangerous for him and we had this great big argument and then the next day I heard about home zones on the radio and I suddenly thought yes this is what we want. What is a home zone? I was going to say, I could do it by telling you what isn't a home zone. Home zone isn't traffic, traffic calming, it's about people. And you start seeing greenery and you start seeing surfaces that look like they should be walked on and played on. And, 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 what you, and, and when you come out of your house, likewise, you don't see a sea of black tarmac with cars parked all over it. You start, you're more likely to see somebody walking or somebody cycling or somebody playing in the street or somebody sitting on a bench. You know, and, and I think that is just a, a more human way of living. Home zones are a new concept in the UK, although their equivalent, Vernerfen, have become a common feature of continental Europe over the past 30 years. In Britain, campaigning by communities started to turn the tide in the 1990s, and the government agreed to pilot the concept in 1998. In the following year, an influential report chaired by the architect Richard Rogers put home zones at the centre of plans to revive our cities. The city has always been about meeting of people, ideally in comfortable places, whether you go to Pompeii or Athens, or whether you go to a Renaissance or medieval city or modern city. It's about finding a pleasant step to sit on, or a pleasant street, which is where you meet most people, or a pleasant square, or a pleasant park. The key thing is, it's the street where most people bump into each other. And that's at the heart of a civil society, it really is. The whole concept of security is critical to any community, to any individual. You should think of this, the public space, which is the street, the pavement, as really an extension of your living room. The community needs to get together and decide how do they gain the space outside their house. But my main concern is getting from there to there. Anyway, I'll go and look at the rest of it. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. What does it actually mean? Will there still be your, your layer as a street? Aye, but it might well be the curb in as it is at present. The curb, so the pavement so might disappear. It should all be the same level. It just depends what people want it to look like. The amount of cars on the road nowadays, yeah. you've got the junction, mm. you've got the, the road going straight along, plus you've got the junction yeah. coming up that way, so... You know, you can design it and do it in a certain way that, you know, the priority is taken away from the cars. That's what you need. What is it you want to get across and what is it you want people to be telling you what, what kind of dialogue do you want to establish and what are the methods of doing that and it's to do with having lots of different ways of doing it as well going on at the same time I mean having information available not just on boards but on a website from books um, on a drive through video with models and lots of different ways of people giving information to or responding so they're not having to write things down because lots of people really don't like doing that anyway and ways for people to do it quite individually so they're not feeling exposed in a crowd, you know, they're not having to do that thing of standing up in a big kind of audience and say stuff. It's not this thing of just asking people what they'd like and giving no kind of idea of the possibilities of what could be, you know, when your experience has been this. How can you know about that, you know? Mindset change as bad officials are concerned because it's automatic, you want this or this, yeah. rather than saying, well, it's yours, what do you want? I mean, at the end of the day, I'll leave here at 3 o'clock and go to another part of the country. The people that are here are staying here. 
That's what it's all about. Yeah. You know, somebody was saying, ah, it should just be for the kids, and then somebody else said, well, it should be for everybody. Let's look at what we can do for other people as well. I have asked the question, what if the residents don't want it? What do you do then? I had very little negative stuff, I would say, today. There will be negative stuff, we know that, but uh, it's nice to have a positive start, anyway. The first steps in creating a home zone are important ones. All around the UK, communities are talking about the issues affecting their streets, discussing the opportunities, as well as the potential pitfalls. Is that your house? No, mine's over there. Yeah. Where do you live? Yeah. 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 Coronation Road. Number 12. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think we realise how big the blooming estate is. So what you do is, if you've got any particular issues that you think you, you'd like the home zone to account for, there's cards over there that say various things, and there's blank ones over there if you'd like to write your own ideas down, and you come and place them on, on the model where you think that the particular issue is relevant. Uh, well, obviously these are all different situations and we'll need to design this for its, you know, for this site, not for one of these other sites. Mm -hmm. But it's actually providing some spaces and identifying places where people can walk much better mm -hmm. just by changing the colour of the surfacing. It's more street that's nice, isn't it? And what else is most important to you? Clouds, isn't it? We will have to see in a minute what they're going to do to make sure that you can still do your walk along the road, won't we? Yeah, yeah because they, if they, for example, decided to um, put a car park just there somewhere, right in the middle of where Peter needed to walk through, it'd be fine for everybody else because they could just walk past the cars, yeah. but Peter potentially couldn't. We'd have to make sure that there was a safe route through. We tried right from the beginning to say, well, this is about your area, this is your street. This is your estate. We want to know what you want and how you want this thing designed for you. Some guy came up to me and said, are you going to take all our front gardens away? I've heard that's what you're going to do in tarmac anymore. People tend to, to have this mistrust with councils and consultants that they're just going to come in and just do whatever they think. And so by doing this first, we get those ideas. We can then go away and do some provisional designs, come up with some options for the area then come back again to the community and say, well, look, this is what you've told us. This is what we've interpreted from what you've told us. What do you think? And then they'll say which way they want to go, and then we go away and do the final design. It gives us an opportunity with this money to sort of rebuild the estate almost, make it just a nice place to live. And every resident has got the opportunity to have their say. It's sort of like doing your own garden, you know. You, some people like lots of trees and shrubs, some people like a nice long lawn, some people like a water feature, your choice. You know, we've got the opportunity to do something similar, but with the whole estate. It's not very often you get an opportunity to completely rebuild where you live. Elderly people are very worried that things will get vandalised if they put like seating, shrubs, trees, whatever. And children are going to congregate, there's going to be more problems, vandalism, drinking, all that sort of thing, you know, and noise nuisance as well. But I, th I think that maybe if the kids were to help with it, then it would um, try and calm things down. Young people are an important part of any community. In Stirling, they decided to organise Streetwise, special children's events running alongside the more adult-oriented consultation sessions. Somebody came to our door, right? Well, they asked us if we'd like to come to Streetwise at their at walk huts. So we said, that yes, if, if our mum's allowed us to. And so, yeah, our mum's allowed us to, so we came here. And, well, we thought it was brilliant. And what did they explain to you? Well, they explained that they would be making things streets better, things that we like in our streets, and how we would like to change our streets, make it a little cleaner, maybe get rid of something that's no use, and you know, different parking spaces for like cars that park in the wrong place on the pavement. And like make more play areas for right, our parking. Exactly. That. Maybe just you know, stuff you like. Like a basketball court here, like red ash, and we'd like benches like on the sides, and we'd like to knock the wall down, 
and we would like to turn that into a fence, like a see-through fence, so like so people can see through, right, and they can see what other people are doing instead of having to climb up in the wall. This, this garden here, this is the kind of gardens that everybody should everybody should you know, want. It's, it's clean and all that. Not not like my garden. <laughs> A, a wavy bit that's coming out, then in, and like a wee bench there or trees or something. This is where our, where we play most of the time. It's really been a process of pulling out their ideas. If you ask children straight what they want, they maybe can't tell you straight away. So it's a gradual process over a few days of trying to encourage them to come up with their ideas. And are these fences up just now? Yeah, uh, and that would be the pavement, if you know what I mean. So what would happen is they might redesign the space where the parking is elsewhere. It's a shame that they don't have a say in a lot of uh, things that do get developed, a lot of developments, because they're the ones that use it, they're the ones that use paths, uh, and they're the ones that will abuse it if they don't get their say. It's not just lip service. I think that you get a better scheme. It's something that the residents want that actually works better for the people on the street. Uh, me and Jim are just about on the streets all the time and, and people just start to come up and speak to you. They, they won't write a letter. They might not come along to a meeting, but that just that 10 minute yeah. conversation you can have with them. Sometimes I just come and stand here with a clipboard mm. and um, people come out of their doors and start telling you what they think. It's going to where people are rather than asking them to come to you, whether it's at like a fun day like this or whether it's on their doorstep or whether it's actually in the local chippy or whatever, you just get them when they want to come and speak to you. And like I say, I'm concerned that it's all going to end up funneling up and make it worse where I am, that's my problem. On that corner? On that corner, yeah. yeah. Okay, right, thanks. Yeah. Speak to you. <laughs> People had a lot of problems in visualising how it could be different. And we did a preview on the pavement showing the initial home zones um, video and we have held lots and lots of different days, photographic sessions, all sorts of things to try to get people more dis involved in the design but at the end of the day they, they find it really difficult just to think of things out of the air and they actually need to, somebody to come along with some inspiration and say hey look this is what we could change it into somebody that that has a bit of a feel for, for people being out in the streets and isn't afraid to push the boundaries of, of what's acceptable in engineering terms a long way You've got to have a design, you've got to have, you've got to have input by, by the professionals. And he's a professional. I've seen what he's done in, in the areas, we've seen his work elsewhere, and he's OK. Yeah, he's earned his money. Just tell him what you think about the street. If the cars weren't there... When I first came in this job, one of the first things I did, I took photographs of the streets and airbrushed digitally all the cars away and said, here we go, what would you do then now? And it so frightened people because they thought we were going to make it no parking. <laughs> and it, my kind of art training was about blank canvas, what can we do? And they just saw, this is what we're going to do. Because there was a whole issue of they assumed that we were going to do whatever we wanted. And that isn't the process. Well, first I knew about it was the leaflets through the door about the home zone. And um, I thought, well, I want to know what this is all about, what's happening in my street. So I went to the meetings. We knew it was regeneration. And well, I was curious, and uh, from day one I got involved with it, and uh, thoroughly enjoyed it. That's been a, that's been interesting. Got a lot of residents with problems. You talk to me. I try and solve those problems, sort of visually, take them back to them. Has the, has this visual drawing, this kind of whatever it is, digital print or whatever, is that close to what you were talking about? And they say yes. Okay, okay. I take my drawing to the planners, the engineers, and I say, is this possible? This is what they want here. Can we do it? And they say, no, but we can do this. I redraw it, take it back. And I'm sort of the person that's been negotiating all those conversations. We've had an awful lot to think about. We've been meeting for well over a year now before the final decisions have made. And we've had to consider um, wheelchair access. We've had to make sure that the streets don't go too narrow to make sure emergency services can get down and the wheelie bin people, because we still want our bins emptied. We still want the ambulance to come if we need it and the fire engines. Even through the works, because it's going to be about four months that the street's going to be disruptive. And one of the main issues about this whole pro project has been parking. Everybody wants the bit outside of their house. 
to park their car. And these streets weren't built for cars at all. And that's not a problem because we can deal with that. They're actually building a mass of parking at the bottoms. My initial reaction was to go and see about the parking, but I got drawn into it and I got quite involved in it. I've made a lot of good friends and I've enjoyed the time really. It's been really good fun. Rome wasn't built in a day, and uh, our two streets uh, uh, just want to finish now. <laughs> if you're in a car, what you look at is up there, and you're going at 40, 50 miles an hour. You don't care about anything else because you've got this basically a straight view. What we're going to do is break that up. This will build right out, right out here, and you're crunching all of this in and there'll be a feature there as well so you've actually got to make it narrow enough to stop the cars from going fast here there will be big boulders that you cannot you cannot mess with and as a pedestrian they'll they'll actually shield you from the mess of traffic and if you're elderly you're having you'll have a real problem actually coming across here so we're building out so in fact the entrance is going to be one car width creating a sort of gateway feature making it safer and what'll happen is the cars are going to have to come into the center of the road to look down the road so that actually if you're in the road you can see the car and if you're in the car you can see the people in the road all the materials are about hard wearing and if bits are chipped off it kind of still works rather than very carefully designed things that look great for about half an hour this big sort of round all thing here will have text in and that's part of the work I've done with sort of the archives looking back seeing who's lived here the kind of work that went on in these two sort of roads. And I mean, one of the main ideas is that the, as you walk from here right down the end of the street and back, you'll be reading the street. And so it's like a giant book, and that's the idea. And you read through time as well as through space. That seems a damn good idea, you know, I mean, providing everyone respect that wasn't as one has done. Probably make it look a lot better. I hope it do. You know, it's basically the bottom line of it. We did a whole series of fantasy road design with the kids and I think there was a sort of paddling pool at one point and a skate park and a whole range of stuff that obviously is not possible. But it was important to go through that process and actually to say, what, what is it you want about? What is it you want from the roads? What is it you need? And then try and incorporate that into conversations with somebody who was over 70. Like what does a six year old want? What does a seven year old want? And actually getting them not to talk to each other, because that was actually quite difficult, but to talk to each other through the things that I was sort of presenting. But take, we're taking this curb out, and this curb will go like this. So there'll be a line within the road that, for me as a kid, it'd be great to follow. And you'll just follow this line, and it'll just wiggle backwards and forwards. And I suppose there's an element of play in that. I think the only way to do this is to be so transparent you don't exist. You have to say, this is what this is. And they say, people can play on it. And I say, yeah, they can, and they probably will do. And you need to say now if you really don't want this. Many communities are deciding that this is exactly the kind of thing they do want for their streets. For the first time in this country, home zones have been given the go ahead. Everyone just doing that little bit and thinking, well, this is where we live um, and this is what we want for our area. And, um, you know, just making people aware this is what can be done. You know, this is what can be done if people are brought together. And, uh, you know, whether you meet in somebody's house, in a school hall, in a church hall, in a garden shed, it's, you know, 
it only, only takes somebody with one idea and, uh, it, you know, today it's proved it can be done, it can be done. Whether you set a lot of balloons off, whether you, you grass the streets, whether you make a cup of tea, whether you have a bric-a-brac stall, it can be done, it can be done. But I think it's great for children around there. You can see them today, they're on the bikes and everything. There's more safety and um, we can play more. The streets and that, they're not looking tatty now. It's been a concerted effort from an, a core of the residents, but all the residents have been involved in it at some point or another, even if it's only been coming out to do's like this, where they've all come out and joined in and participated and parted with some of their cash and made it clear that they are part of the community. A lot of talking um, and listening and then trying to do what people ask me to do rather than doing what I'm told to do or what I think is right. Um, and it's a case of coming up with a practical balance between their aspirations and what we can actually deliver. I'm very proud of it. It's, it's, a, it's a, a, a really good, uh, good thing to have done. I think the results speak for themselves. The number of people here today uh, and as we've seen regularly in events like this, um, I, I have a great deal of personal pride in the scheme. I think the community have got a lot to be proud of. I think it's because people genuinely wanted it and so it's taken a long time but it's been worth it. They can see that okay it might not be an instant fix but what they've got is going to last for generations not just for the current residents but for the next people that come along after for their children and for their children's children. Just think if people get up and do something, something happens. I always thought lots of other people did things here for the Methodist Association and then I applied for a grant <laughs> and then that was it. There was a party to organise and it just happened really. centre on a Wednesday. People come on bus to collect me and they've all passed good remarks about it, how it looks. Oh, your area's posh now. I said, no, I said, it's just hard work. The planting, the, seeing the trees and seeing the trees and blossom down in Methley Drive. Oh, that's so brilliant. What a difference that makes. I feel more confident about the kids playing out because the traffic's slower and more people know our kids so I let them go out more than I would do before. It's not just for cars anymore, it's for people, for kids. My dogs feel safe on the streets, they've told me. <laughs> it's just great, it feels like a, a happy area to live in. We had a really difficult time uh, at one point where there was a petition which was raised um, against the whole idea. And the main problem was that the, the people living in that particular area didn't want children playing outside their house because they hated the idea of any noise. And, and we found that really difficult to deal with because those of us with children thought they were just being a bit horrible, really. And in the end, we, we, we talked to them a lot and, and discussed it, and we did decide to change the designs quite considerably so that they wouldn't be affected. I regret that quite a lot, because I think if we'd handled it a different way from the very beginning, we might have got those people on board if we'd talked to them more. And um, it's sort of a learning curve, isn't it? You realise that you could have done it differently, but you didn't know anything about it the first time round. Basically, they were asking very simple things, uh, somewhere to kick a ball against without disturbing people, and perhaps a basketball hoop, and that's basically all they wanted. And they're not going to get it? And they're not going to get it. I think it should be a street where children can be, but not with, like, wheeled games, um, ball games, things like that. 
um, not where children can congregate necessarily. You know. Know, some of the kids have actually said to me, we didn't realise we were being noisy, and they, you know, because they didn't realise. You know, and it's such, sometimes trying to get a dialogue between the older people and the young and you know, trying to talk to each other rather than this kind of trench warfare. And I think that still people don't really understand the whole idea. And because some people are so um, convinced about one particular aspect of it, or, or perhaps they have a problem with cars and parking, that sort of takes over what they think of um, as a home zone. That becomes the most important thing to them. By all means, pave the streets, do the roads up, plant a couple of trees in. But don't plant no trees near my house because I don't want the roots underneath. <laughs> You're never going to find 100%. You're never going to get 100% of people liking everything all the time anyway. No, there's a lot to be said for. Continental, this is a continental way. Holland, Germany. But we're not on the continent, we're in England. Well, when they first started, I, I did a lot of moaning. I was out on the doorstep moaning all the time. But it's, it's come on, it's come on. I, I think it's brilliant. I think it's turning out brilliant. One of the problems is keeping the momentum going. In the early days, a lot of enthusiasm, a lot of people turning up to meetings. And then you go through the consultation stages, the, the changing of plans and so on. And I felt then that we were, we were struggling. Positions became polarised a little bit despondent about things. But now that the final plans have gone through, the last meeting we had, there was a much greater consensus of feeling, yes, OK, we're coming to a place where we can agree on this. So, yeah, I think we've gone through the dip. We're on the way up now. It's keeping the communication going. I think communication is one of the big areas. You've got to get people on board and they've got to know what's going on and the feeling it's not an imposed thing. It's something we're working on together. We've got a system of, of having street representatives for each road and uh, it means that they can keep in very close contact with more people than just maybe a handful from one street. So I think involving as many people as possible is really important. The advice that I was given very early on about just enjoying the process and having fun as you do it, it's really important to sit down and have a few beers together or whatever and not just treat it as um, a sort of formal work kind of thing. Well, that's all you want and that's all you try. Put a fist in my back. It's very easy to get bogged down with traffic calming and parking and through traffic. You spend an awful lot of time worrying about road surface, the number of cars. In many respects, um, the street party is the most perfect element of the home zone. Uh, not least because it has that delightful element of closing the street, letting the kids run around, and they love running around in the street. And it's a thing we're terribly bad at in Britain because we've got so inculcated with the idea that streets are cars. One of the things people said to me right from the word go was, the problem with your home zone is it's in the wrong place because there are too many cars. And I said, no, um, if we can do it here, we can do it anywhere. And we've done it here, so let's do it everywhere. As existing streets are being converted into home zones, House builders and developers have also shown interest. In Gateshead, one of the first home zone developments is being constructed and goes on sale to the public. This is different because it's a new build with nearly 700 units. And I think the concepts are different because you don't have any residents on site to talk to, maybe to disagree with what you're doing. You're trying to sell a concept to people who want to buy into it. But we were talking about creating something that was so unique it would draw people into what isn't an obvious residential destination. And so as part of uh, having the Hemingways on board and creating unique architecture and unique forms of layout that encourage community living, we also latched onto the home zone principle. Because the home zone principle creates better streets, it creates better environments for people to live in. Myself and my wife started criticising the, the mass house builders for building this kind of identikit 
rabbit hutches um, all around the country and we when we sold Red or Dead we took the kids out of school and we, we toured all around Europe and, and further than that as well and kept seeing that affordable housing was and was being done on a more human scale and with more individuality, more space in between, less reliance on the car and black tarmac, more places for kids to play, people to meet. And over here it just seems to be housing just treated as a commodity. It's very easy to fall into the trap where you lay out the roads and position the buildings around the roads. It's difficult to break that mould. With the home zone, you position the buildings, you form the whole urban mass, the, the, the environment, the streetscape, and then you weave a path for vehicles through the space between the buildings. That whole public realm is a series of features. Lots of different surfacing types, very irregular spaces, and you, you just won't see those tramline carriageways and those footpaths weaving their way through. It's not been easy so far, you know, because I think we've all realised from the developer, the designers and ourselves as highway authority that um, we are breaking new ground and we have to think about new problems and we, when we come to them we've got to try and solve them and seek advice in doing so. Um, but, but my hope is that it will be a template for future developments, not only here in Gateshead but in other parts of the country as well. It costs more to landscape a home zone than it, than it does to, to get a big machine in. Uh, that churns out black tarmac out the back and a big roller comes along and, and flattens it on. Whoever's bought here, I'm convinced that, that, when, it, that, when, it's, that when it's finished, that their friends and their family will be jealous and the concept will spread around the country and people will demand more and they won't and they'll say, I don't want that car, I don't want to live in a car park anymore, I want to live in a proper landscaped environment where I can step outside, where I can talk to people where I can cycle in safety, where I can overlook my kids rather than overlook my car. I mean, and all that is often designed out of our lives and it's about time we designed it back in. is shared space, which it's taken us four years to understand. They see it as their space and not just the motorists now. Yes. Well, where I am at the moment, it's bloody great, I have to say. <laughs> we, were, we were a rat run, we were a straight road down at Bosco and um, we had nowhere where we could take our children out to play when they were younger. We've now got our very nice row of planters. It's all been railed in. The kids come out with their bikes and trikes and have a great time. We have a barbecue, a glass of wine maybe. Once we have the build, we have the planting days and then um, people were starting to buy their own plants and do little things to the front of their houses. And then it got so you'd be out washing your car and some neighbours would come out and talk to you and they'd say, oh, it looks a lot nicer in the street now. I never knew Sue until we actually got on board this committee. You know, we've become really good friends. Well, the whole committee have become really good friends. Nikki I knew briefly, but um, no, it, it brought lots of people from different areas all together. And we're a firm little group now. And now that we've become the Morristown Community Forum, where we're trying to take things even more forward. You come down the big hill, and before you used to look to your street, and it used to look straight and dismal, and all cars and no, no colour. And now, I find myself, like I'm driving down, I'm stuck at the traffic lights, I look to the street mm. and you smile. It cheers you up. As more and more home zones are completed, and the people who live in them get on with the job of looking after them. Residents from other neighbourhoods can go and see home zones firsthand. What's your What's yours like at home? We've no started. No started yet. We've got some sculptures on some of the buildings. Did the design in the liner cups. Yeah, if you can have a look, see the printed the integrated several circles. Two or three. It's brilliant. 
kids would love to do things yeah, like that, wouldn't they? Yeah, it's actually magic. The, the speed calming areas here, the extent of landscaping you get, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's not just like a token gesture. Yeah. You come in here and you think, wow, it's lovely here and it's more open. More yeah. open. Yeah. Yeah. You know. There's loads of different ways of doing it actually, isn't there? It yeah. just all depends on what the residents want. We managed to get about a thousand bulbs planted recently. When we planted all the other things, uh, we had a massive group of people out and uh, it was fantastic. Yeah. We said to them, like, rather than us having to call you up, why don't you just give us some paint mm -hmm. and we'll do it? Because it's easier for us than getting the council out and stuff. Uh -huh. And they, they had to think about it for a while, <laughs> but then, you know, then they delivered the paint. So. And I think people can see how the spaces work and also you can see how cars use the street, which is really important. <laughs> I like the idea of the kids can put in the rain bits as well. Aye, it's nice. And a chair in a street. <laughs> I just feel like sitting at the door with a coffee in a summer, don't we? Just yeah. sitting. It's one thing to see photos and hear people, but it's another thing to actually walk along the street. It means so much more. You know, cold. <laughs> I've lived in this route a lot of years and I know what an, a really nice area it was to live in and I wanted to see it kept that way. So I went along to have my say, which I was able to do. You're actually doing it for people. You're doing it for, for the most important thing in people's lives and that's where they live. You just have to keep the away. It's no good shouting too loud. You just need to work along. Everything's kind of slowed down over there, which is obviously better. You're taking, you've got, you know you've got to take your time if you're in the car. We moved here because of the home zone. We, we knew that it was coming and um, we just feel it's, it's making a community at last. Do you think it's safe? Yes. Yeah. 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 No. no. Safe. safe. No. Safe. It's safe. It's not safe. safe. It's not safe. But it's not safe. safe. I get what you mean. It's safe but it's not safe. We have had three old ladies with a, with a handbag and um, plastic bags in Charlotte Street with scissors from outside of the area taking cuttings from all different planters and then getting in a car and going off. It's important to let people know what you want or it's never going to get there. If you don't let them know, they'll never make it. Aye, exactly.